Hello there, my fellow battle brothers, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. For today, we're gonna talk some more about these fellows known as the Death Spectres in a second and final episode. We already talked about their history last time, so today we're gonna mention a few other things of theirs. These will include their librarians, gene seed, beliefs, heroes, and relics. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Like many chapters, the Death Spectres 2 train and test chosen psychers following the ways of the Codex Astartes. The chapter's librarius, known as the Order, possesses a size and power that is quite unique among many other Space Marine chapters. The Mesazar is known to command the chapter in the absence of the chapter's Megir, aka the chapter master. There are some references, but it is not entirely known if the Megir himself is a psyker. If he was, he would then obviously be considered part of the chapter's librarius. The Death Spectre's librarians appear to place great emphasis on reading the tides of time and fate, and appear to have an unparalleled mastery for changing future events. The Mesazar are noted for being able to place prophetic notes in time itself, through their sheer power. This enables the Death Spectres to be in the appropriate place in the event certain eventualities come to pass. They can pass on information, and even psychic aid, if and when those eventualities actually occur. Through these techniques, the chapter Librarius seemingly alters the future to a degree that very few Imperial organizations can afford. Chapter Aspirants, or at least those of the Librarius, are known to experience two deaths while trying to earn a place inside the chapter. The first death is experienced at around 10 years of age, when an aspirant first begins the gene seed implantation process. The aspirant is injected with a lethal toxin, and does remain dead until he revives on his own. Failure obviously leads to oblivion. The second death takes place at the end of the aspirant's implantation process, when the neophyte takes his place among the chapter. This death is much more intense, as the aspirant experiences death for solar hours rather than a minute. A third death can also sometimes take place, but this is only for members of the librarius who wish to attain the rank of Codicier, and greater power as a result. A deeply held belief within the Death Spectre's chapter is that of the Black River, which is seen by the aspirants of the librarius during the ritual death that they experience. It is unconfirmed if non psycher aspirants see it as well. Though their first death is for the shortest duration, it is also the greatest, as during this trial one is assailed by the Black River's currents, which seem to symbolize fate and time. They are also assaulted by, air tags, forces that are drawn to it and the person experiencing it a.k.a. Demons. This first trial is a very arduous one, as it is a task the aspirant has no experience in dealing with, and so failure is fairly common. The Death Spectres have a rather unique and unsettling way of recruiting new aspirants into the chapter. By the orders of the Megir, the Death Spectres seek out suitable human-settled colonies away from the heart of the Imperium. Here they collect the best genetic specimens of any women they can find. These women are then taken to a suitable breeding world, established near the Death Spectre's homeworld of Occludus. There the women are expected to bear future generations who might prove capable of joining the ranks of the Death Spectres as neophytes. Just like the Raven Guard, the Battle Brothers of this chapter possess a minor mutation which causes their melanochromic organ, which controls the amount of melanin in an Astarte's skin tone, do not function properly, leading to the development of albinism in Death Spectre's Astartes. Deferring melanochrome gene seed from chapter to chapter leads to variations in skin and hair color, and in some chapters all the space marines may have identical coloration, such as is found in the albino warriors of the Death Spectre's chapter. 
Another aspect of the genetic flaws of their gene seed is that it causes all the members of the chapter to possess glowing blood-red eyes as well, akin to the salamanders. Over time, the deaf specters have also lost the use of two of their special organs produced by the basic Astartes genetic template. The Betcher's gland, which allows a space marine to produce a poisonous acidic spittle, and a mucronoid, which causes a space marine's body to secrete a waxy protein that seals his skin. Space marines are cocooned in this way before they enter suspended animation. There are innumerable variants of the Imperial cult and the Space Marines' attitudes towards it in the Imperium. To the Death Spectres, death is important to them in the nature and traditions of the chapter. It is not important in the more morbid sense, such as the way the Mortifactors chapter celebrates it, but in a more somber and respectful sense. True to Imperial dogma, they held as a central tenet to their beliefs that only those who die in battle will be reborn. And while they give little leeway or respite to the living, they deeply honor those who fall in the Emperor's service, and hold the many martyrs of the Imperium and the dead of their own chapter with high reverence. Upon the death of a battle brother of the chapter, those death specters whose bodies can be recovered are returned to Logopole and are mummified and then interred within the fortress monastery catacombs. Deaf specters find great comfort and peace in the quiet of the endless graveyards, and the tomb cities of their homeworld, which includes Logopol. Battle brothers of the chapter are also known to utilize a unique gesture, known as the Masrahim. This is done by placing the left hand, palm up, next to the abdomen, and then placing the right hand in a closed fist in the palm of the left. Some notable Death Spectre's Astartes include Megir Corcadus. He was the first Megir, or chapter master, of the Death Spectres, and former holder of the Four Sword Archimon, but more on that thing later. When Corcadus laid at the foot of the Golden Throne, he received a vision that led him to the world of Occludus and the remains of the Shariax, or the Throne of Glass. Also, the title of Megir itself is also known as the First Spectre, the Grand Master of the Order, and the Eye that Pierces the Veil. Mesazar Afiocordatus he is the current Mesazar, or chief librarian, of the chapter, and a de facto chapter master. He is a mentor to Lyandro Karras. Captain Rohayam Elgrist. He is the captain of the Death Spectre's third company, and the current Megron, or master of the flag. Death Watch Watch Captain Harsid. Seconded to the Death Watch, Captain Harsid currently leads his own kill team in close collaboration with Inquisitor Talala Yazir of the Ordo Xenos. Since an Eldar attack on the Dawnbreak cluster, Harsid and the Inquisitor hunt for a series of dangerous Xenos artifacts. They believe that these artifacts have corrupted several high-ranking Magi of the Adeptus Mechanicus, and whose corruption could quickly spread to other Mechanicus-aligned factions such as the Iron Hands chapter. Codicier Lyandro Carus. He is a Death Spectre's Codicier currently seconded to the Ordo Xeno's Death Watch. Carus is known as Scholar to his kill team, and it was this kill team that slew the Orc warlord Balfazog Bloodwreck. Sergeant Iscus Corvinus. He is a brother sergeant who was seconded to the Inquisition along with the remnants of the 68th Vostroyan Firstborn Regiment, after they were devastated on Danik's world in 767 M41. The fates of this regiment and of brother sergeant Corvinus are unknown. A couple of famous chapter relics include Archimon. Archimon is a relic for sword belonging to the Death Spectre's chapter. This sword was once laid at the feet of the Emperor on the Golden Throne by the chapter's first Megir. Only seconds after laying the sword down, the Megir received a vision of the Shariax. Little is known of its purpose, and nothing is known about its origin. 
The first Megir then proceeded to build the Death Spectre's fortress monastery of Logopol, directly above the cavern containing the glass throne. The sword itself seems to have a psychic spirit bound to it. This spirit will meld itself with the spirit of the wielder, making him even more deadly. The sword was initially owned by the first Megir of the Death Spectres, but after his ascension on the glass throne, he passed the sword on to the Mesazar Aphiocordatus, who then passed the sword on to the librarian Leandro Carus when Carus was selected to join the Death Watch. It is said that the Bite of Archimon is certain death whenever it glows with otherworldly power. It is lethally sharp even without the power of the Immaterium running through it. The Torch of the Vigil This one is a master-crafted Astartes Heavy Flamer. Late in the 36th millennium, a Death Watch kill team was allied with a squad of Space Marines belonging to the Death Spectre's chapter in an action against the vile Xeno's race deep in what would one day become known the Orpheus Salient of the Jericho Ridge. Together, the two squads were able to eradicate the alien threat, but not before the Sergeant of the Death Spectres was eviscerated by the vicious monsters. It was only by the actions of the members of the kill team that the Sergeant's gene seed was preserved and harvested, and his ancient war gear recovered. As a reward for this aid, the Death Spectres presented the stewards of Watch Fortress Ariok with this mighty relic of the Torch of the Vigil. The Death Spectres primarily wear black power armor. The inset of the shoulder plates are white with black trim. The Aquila or Imperialis on the chest plate, as well as the helmet, are bone white. The White Squad specialty symbol is painted on the right shoulder plate. A black gothic numeral is stenciled in the center of the squad specialty symbol, indicating squad number. The iconography on the right knee guard indicates which company a battle brother belongs to. Finally, their chapter badge is a large, bone-white skull with a pair of crossed ebon scythes directly behind it, centered on a field of white. And this, my friends has been what I wanted to tell you about the Death Spectres chapter for today. Are these guys among your favorite Space Marine chapters? Were you even aware of their existence prior to these videos? Feel free to share any thoughts and opinions you might have on them in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects